In this live martial arts video, we're gonna be talking about using the Kung Fu fighting fan or the Kyoshi warrior fan from Avatar. The question is, can you fight like Avatar? Meaning, can you fight with this fan, this style? Does it work? Does it, is it practical? Is it even a thing? And the answer is absolutely yes. They've been around for a very long time. I've been using these for many, many years. And you, uh, once you learn how to use them, they're a lot of fun to train with. I want you to think of it as this though. We did a series a few weeks ago called Fighting with Sticks. And can you fight with sticks? And how to defend yourself with sticks? And we talked about all kinds of sticks. The long martial arts staff, like the bow or the, uh, the Korean jongbong, the short sticks, the palm sticks, the yawaras, or the uh, dongbong, the Koreans call it. And then we talked about kind of the middle size, the joe. We talked about the one with the hook or the crook on it, the walking stick or the hiking stick. And I told you we were gonna talk about improvised fighting sticks. So this is just simply an improvised stick. It's a little bit less long than the a Screamer Kali stick, but it's just as powerful when it comes to a strike. So you have the striking of the slicing motion the same way you do with any other stick. You have jabbing motions just like you do with any other stick. You have blocking motions like you do with other sticks. You also have some of the stick that comes out of the bottom side of your hand that you use to dig into their eye to the, for self-defense, to, you know, to the neck, to those, uh, all the nerves in there, all the nerves in here, crush the throat for self-defense. So this is a very effective tool and it's disguised as a fan. Now when the fan is open, and this is a wooden fan, this is the bamboo fan, and you ask me all the time, where do you get those? I have these to sell. And I know I don't always sell a lot of things, but these are small items that I do sell. If you are interested, I sell. This one is about 20 bucks. It's made out of wood, it's extremely durable. I've had this particular fan, and I open it, close it, open it, close it, and I hit everything. Strike it all the time for at least 20 years. And it, it's still, it's a little frayed there on the tips you can see, but it's still very effective, it still works. And this is very, very durable. These spines are very durable. I also have these in metal. I don't have a metal one right now. I sold the last one out, but those are about 50 bucks. Personally, if you want my opinion, I know in the Kyoshi Warrior series, series and Avatar, they carry metal fans, which, and they, um, I don't sell them, but they do sell some, or they used to, or you've seen the Kung Fu movies. They have like a little knife on the end, a sharpened point, and that's because they're also a slicing, this way, a slicing weapon, where you can slice up, down, coming through all the different angles, and they're, and they're so fun to uh, train with, right? It's good cross training. Now, is it a practical everyday weapon that you would carry? Sure, of course it is. Because again, what is it? It's an improvised stick. So think of angular strikes, think of horizontal strikes, think of vertical strikes coming down and coming up, but smashing somebody up under their chin. And then think about jabbing, coming through for self-defense. Coming through this way, right? Maybe it's the ribs, maybe it's that neck, maybe it's in the eye or the temple. It's very effective and then of course, you have this backside coming across here, pushing this way, coming down this way, coming down over top. And then they have a knife. All you have is a stick. It's better than your fingers, your skin. The stick doesn't bleed. It doesn't feel anything. The knife's coming in, blocking this way, and immediately counter-striking. You're also able to open it in these spines. Also, very durable. Those can go over, see how I pull that over my head? So if I do a blocking motion up, down, to the, up to the side, I know you can't see as much. Uh, sometimes you'll see stylistically, the knee comes up or practically, if you wanna think of it that way. But these have been around for a long time. And I know you've had this question, is it possible to fight like a Kyoshi warrior? And I, and I looked into, I'm not, I love the avatar concept. I love that whole concept of the different elements of water, power. Uh, I like any story where someone's trying to be a good person and fight against the bad people and do the right thing against all odds, right? Overwhelming odds. And then you have this idea that these warriors are disguised, their weapons are disguised in the form of this fan. So, you know, it's like, right? It's like any other fan. It works extremely well in this, this traditional style but when you close it, and you'll see, and I want to talk about this, 
you see a lot of times I've seen cosplay people and you know those people who wear the costume and they pretend like they're whatever if you're cosplay you know what I'm talking about everybody else it's the guys that dress up like their favorite cartoon or anime character or um, you know Star Wars character or whatever they go to conventions but there's some that I've seen uh, on the on the interwebs who do the uh, the Kyoshi warrior thing and they're doing the dance and it's really all they're doing is the traditional uh, Chinese or Korean or Japanese fan dance you know and this permeates um, I, I used to, we used to actually have a club when I ran the nonprofit in Ohio where we taught the Korean fan dance I didn't teach it I had a Korean uh, legit Korean uh, fan dancer come in and she taught all it was a bunch of teens and tweens and then I thought well we're gonna teach them that you need to teach them how to fight with that thing too because it is very effective so if you want to train with this thing here's how you start you close it with your hand around the bottom but you leave a little out now you'll see this is my point about the Kyoshi Warriors so two ways to hold it one is with it just kind of stuck in the crook of the hand your thumb is going to come on the spine and you're going to find that there's one side where it lets it open and if you turn it the other side let it try to fall out the other side it's going to do that right where it's not open it's supposed to open the other way like that i think when i started i, I had it in the reverse and, and this is the front that's the back that's where and these are glued on but again these th i've had this particular fan for 20 years and it's still kicking um but the idea is you're carrying it either here and you and it's always about squeezing a nice firm grip that firm grip is what allows you to strike always follow through full speed full power on your strikes but you're squeezing your hands so you have to have a good strong grip but when you open it your thumb goes on that very first spine facing the outside and it, like I said you're gonna when you start playing with this you'll figure out very quickly if you're going the wrong way just turn it pull it the other way but your thumb goes here your first finger kind of comes behind pinching that one and then you simply all you're gonna do is see these other fingers just get them out of the way and it opens these three fingers so the, the see my big chunky first finger my thumb there and then I just open that's all that is and then to get the pop because that's the most fun part you just kind of push your hand down but it's also pushing it down it's squeezing it at the very end so see how my knuckles are changing color that's because my hand is squeezing together and so when you open you'll get in the habit of pulling and squeezing and that makes this all very firm and then you can do that high block you can do the low block you can do that slicing motion coming down i used to teach a form where we had all these kicks and spins really cool kung fu style stuff it reminds me i should start teaching that again anyway if you're in town i'll teach that to you for free buy a fan 20 bucks oh and if you want one send me uh you have to go to my website pasquinali.com the contact box that's on the bottom it says contact matt pasquinali that's me um just in that in the the description or whatever the the message write in hey i want a fan and then we'll figure it out venmo me paypal me whatever send me your address i'll mail a fan to you these are easy to mail because they're so small and it's not like nunchucks where i've got to go through and look up the regulations can i send this to new york city yes can i send the nunchucks no can i send the nunchucks to california i don't think so <laughs> can i send it to london probably not but this this can go just anywhere because it doesn't have anything sharp on it and it's just they'll just and you just tell them hey i got it to put on the wall i'm a big fan of asian art this is my asian art fan and we know of course it's for you to practice and carry with you stick it in your backpack you know and and someone's like oh you're so dorky because you're carrying around that fan to fight with me like no 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 it's just you know i like to cool myself down and yes you're right it is an improvised stick in the same way that like collie stick they have a knife and all you have is this stick to block deflect and then go through their face a couple times for self-defense and horizontal strikes these are these are horizontal strikes vertical strikes horizontal strikes 
diagonal strikes. That's pretty much it. And then think about straight in, right to the eyes, right in the middle, interrupt their line of sight, right? And when you're squeezing this, you're holding when you're, when you're fighting and defending yourself, you're holding, you have a little bit out of the bottom. That's where I think we started. If you're gonna open it, you put that in your palm and you'll learn how to, as you're moving around, you're, you're, you're gonna do, it'll look like this. If we're able to slow it down. Your hand just walks like a caterpillar up and down, moving it down and moving it back up. So it's either in this position, thumb on that first spine, that's what you'll call it, finger on the other side of that first spine and the hands, simply the rest of them open. And it's still supported though, because the center here is pushing into my palm. To close, palm facing the sky, open, close. And at the end again, squeezing, just squeezing it. And when you, it'll take you like, I don't know, a, a week of doing it every day for two to five minutes. By the end of the week, you'll be walking around popping it. Um, if, if you live with anybody, they'll be like, don't do that in here, that's too loud. Because it is extremely, once you, if you do it for a while, it gets louder and louder. And this one is always, uh, the metal ones, it's the one criticism I have about the metal ones. They cost more money, they're really heavy, but the benefit of that is that for self-defense, that becomes much more effective self-defense fighting tool when it's that metal. However, on the other side, uh, it's more questionable. Like, what are you carrying that metal fan for? Why did you hit, why did, you know, see what I mean? Where this one, you're like, no, it's just, you know, it's something I like to use. It's like the Rubik's Cube. You say, you know, I, it's like a fidget spinner. Remember the old fidget spinners? Something to keep your mind busy. You just walk around. It's hot down here in South Florida. You're a martial arts student. And if you're a virtual martial arts student, you're still a martial arts student. Just because you don't pay money and go to the corner school doesn't mean you're not a martial arts student. You can say, hey, I'm a martial arts student. That's why it's in my backpack. I go to the park and I practice to get my fitness up and keep myself in great shape. I practice my self-defense moves this way, self-defense moves this way. And remember, think, think of all the soft spots. Anytime you do self-defense, you're thinking hard to soft. This is a Kung Fu concept. This is a Kyoshi warrior concept from Avatar. Hard, that's really hard, to soft. Temple, uh, eyes, nose. Uh, it's not, the teeth aren't soft, but they come out pretty easily. Throat, that's the, don't, don't hit, if, unless you need to defend your life, don't go for that. Once you crush that, they're done. They can't come back from that. Uh, solar plexus, extremely effective. Either here, put your hands at, hey, I don't want any trouble. And it's all out, right? Self-defense. This is a defensive posture. This is a fighting posture. You are trying to defend yourself. They're, they're, everybody's videotaping to see what's going on. The guy pulls out a knife. You, you're going to go first. You're not going to wait for the, you're not going to try to wait and block that knife. He pulls out that knife and you go straight through. And then, he, and then you back up, he comes in. You use this against the blade, this, not this. You know, this can come off, right? That can, that can end you, that can bleed out. This can bleed out. The, the femoral artery in your leg can bleed out. That can just get nicked up. Maybe you get a couple of holes in there and it's 20 bucks, you get another one, but your life's worth more than 20 bucks, right? So for a practical self-defense, can you use the fighting fan like Kyoshi? And the answer is yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, here's what, what happened, Sensei. Um, a, a lot of people lately have been reaching out to me saying, can you really fight with a fan? Can you really fight with a fan? Because I've done some fan videos on YouTube already. And it all, it came like, I don't know, five or six years ago. I was cleaning out the nonprofit school that we ran for uh, you know, a couple decades. And I found the box. And in there were all of the pretty flowers. If you know about anything about Korean fan dances, all the Korean fans, hello. And I fought, found... Um, I found all these, the metal ones, and the metal ones hadn't fared well. Every time I pop the metal one open, the metal pieces in the back go, they unglue. And then if your finger's in the way, they chop your fingers a little bit. That's another criticism I have of the metal ones. You can get the metal one. Um, I think this is far superior for usability. This is far more user friendly, and it's a great way to start. I wouldn't invest in metal one. And they're just, the metal ones are very heavy, and when you're just a beginner, you want to learn how to fight like a Kyoshi, Kyoshi warrior, get one of these, right? And I saw in the Kyoshi warrior series, it's hard to say it together, Kyoshi warrior um, on Avatar. 
that um, there's like a male dude in there too. There's female. And the idea was these are fisher women and, and uh, a fighter woman comes and sees them to be taken advantage of. And she says, I need to teach these guys some martial art to defend themselves. Kind of like um, uh, Daimo, Dharma Buddha goes to the temple above Shaolin, goes and sits in the cave for nine years. And he comes out and he sees the Shaolin monks getting just beaten up by the thugs in the community. And he says, I need to teach you guys how to fight with that long staff. That's, that's the, the uh, genesis, right? Because martial arts come from India, not from China. China was second. India was like the birthplace. He probably was like a Tamil, you know, the, I have to look it up. Was Dharma a Tamil fighter or was he a Gurkha? Maybe he was, da Dharma came from a line of Gurkha fighters and they did that Gakka, Gakka or whatever it's called, that long, you know, the fighting that they do in India. Then he goes and he teaches it to the warriors over there. Uh, but that's what this is, right? Yeah, I love the dragon. Dragon's one of my favorite. Dragons and tigers, right? I can't get any more martial arts than dragons and tigers. But you find these fans in all cultures in Asia, and a lot of them have been adapted for self-defense, just using the same exact principles. And you see there's, you know, there's the fancy, dancey thing. I'm not going to do that for you. I don't know how to do that. Don't come and ask me to teach you how to kung fu dance or uh, fan dance and put on the makeup. I'm not wearing the makeup. And nothing against people who wear makeup. I'm just not, I'm not that whole... I can't move that slowly. That's why I don't do Tai Chi. I fall asleep when I go through like the third posture. And there's nothing wrong with Tai Chi. It's just me, right? I'm just not wired for it. Hardwired for a faster, a faster speed. So I like to get this thing, pop it open, learn how to block, learn how to strike. And the last thing I'll say, because I know that a lot of you have these or you want to get one and you want to get started with it right, right away. Yeah, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> there's, there's never been a time in my life when I was a little kid and I drink the Kool-Aid, my lips got all red from the Kool-Aid, I had to run in the bathroom and, and that's just me, that's just me. I, I, not that I'm against it for anybody else, that's just not me. I, I, um, I like a natural look, I like a natural look. All right, anyway, uh, so I close it. You're picturing the Kool-Aid man, I know, breaking through the wall, right? Uh, I am. That's me. I, I gotta get the Kool-Aid inside, I don't need it to color my lips. So I got the thing here, got my hand on it, and I have these simple strikes. And think about slicing. Anytime you strike with a stick, you're gonna think about using it like a sword, a machete, your slicing motion. And that's so it doesn't break. You're not gonna come down like it's some kind of hammer or baseball bat, it's not. It's an elegant weapon. So you have these angular strikes down, angular strikes up, down, down, up, up. You can practice 30 seconds per side. One, two, three, four, make the two X's, an X down and an X coming up. Make sure you turn your palm up when you come up, turn your palm out when you come up the other way. And then go through the middle. Think about horizontal strikes, striking the head, striking the arm, the ribs, going all the way down, hitting them in the hips or the knees. So you have all of these horizontal strikes on these different levels. And then you have straight down, right over the top, right? Smashing hard and fast. I can. I can do that on my hard head, but hard and fast hurts. Down and then straight up. When you come up, turn that palm up, and think about you're hitting here. Think about they're reaching out to grab, you smacking their hand up. That hurt. <laughs> They've got that knife. You come in this way. Swinging for the stars, right? Go through. Uh, maybe they, maybe they're, they're choking on, or they, maybe they've grabbed hold of somebody, like your, your family member or somebody you care about. Smash that hand coming up, right? So let's review. Down, down, up. You have your X's, angles. Angles down, angles up. You have horizontal strikes. You have vertical down and vertical up. Vertical down, vertical up. Then you have jabs. Think of just a straight jab. From here, right in to the solar plexus. Throat. That'll, uh, don't play around with that with your friend. That could kill somebody. But for self-defense, that's very effective. Hit, at least it's going to push them back. Straight through their face, a little lower, right in two. But here's the solar plexus. Don't hit them in the stern. That's not going to do much, right? That's all bone. But hit them here. Uh, 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 uh. You can hear. You can push in there fast and knock their wind out at least. Put them on the ground. Go a little lower. That fascia, when that gets torn, you get a hernia. Strike above their private parts and below the belly button. Just aim for that belly button. You hit them there, it's going to hurt. So those basic jabs. Then coming in from the side, think of 
um, a hook punch, right? But you're bringing it in this way. This is extremely hard. I'm squeezing at the same time. You're bringing it across, yeah, of course. Um, across the eyes, great point. Into the temple, into the ear. Go, through, go for the ear. <laughs> Smash that jaw, get them in the neck, all those nerves in there. Um, maybe you go right for those ribs. That last floating rib is not attached like the other ones. You can detach that, send it through their lungs, <laughs> spitting up blood. You're out of there for self-defense, right? You're going through in there, um, right into the, you ever had a dead leg? You know, that big sciatic nerve that goes down both, both legs goes through right about here. You hit this one, it's called sympathetic because that one also, you feel it on both sides. Boom. It's going to put them on the ground. So you can, you can hit them here. And if you have two, I don't have two right now, man, there's, there's so much that you can do using two. When I get two, I'll show you. Um, and then jabbing here on this side. And uh, think, think of your fist as a big hammer, right? But think of your a ball peen hammer. Some of you know what a ball peen hammer is. That's that hammer that has like another little piece that comes out and it's like rounded. It has a little bit of a tip, that rounded part, so that you can get like real precise. But a ball peen hammer puts big dents in metal. This, think of this as a big ball peen hammer, straight over the top. Maybe just stick it right in those, right in the, where the clavicle is right in those nerves. You're gonna send someone to the ground. They're not getting up fast. Bringing it sideways, the ears again, for self-defense. This is all self-defense. You know, going into, there's a big nerve there. When we used to fight, we called it punking. You would, uh, Taekwondo, there's a lot of kicks to the head. So you have to be able to keep your hands up or you're gonna get knocked out. You hit them right there, punch them four or five times right in that nerve. You're pretending like you're gonna hit them here and you missed and you hit them there, right? And all of a sudden their arm gets really tired they start to drop their guard. Boxers do it too. It looks like I'm fighting you here, but I'm going through, I'm hitting this over and over again because I want your guard to be like this so I can knock you out right there. But take this, go right into that nerve. Go right here. That's the end, don't do that, don't play around with that. But for self-defense, that's a very effective spot. Right into the clavicle, just into the chest. Just take this and put it right into those big pectoral muscles, just it just sends fire throughout their body, right? Maybe they are grabbing your friend or they're getting ready to hit them. You just take that, put that right on the top of those muscles right there, all these tendons, all these um, nerve endings, they're all right there. That affects whether they can open and close their hand or not. Bam, just straight down. Of course, you could also strike it. You could do both. You could hit it, come back and strike it. You could strike it, come back and jab it, stick it in there. You could punch like this, and then instead of hitting them with those knuckles, which can break, you hit them with that, which isn't gonna break. You go through, right? right? This is me hitting you in the, with my knuckles. This is me hitting you with that. That's gonna hurt a lot more. And then you bring it back, bam, straight through that way. You can cover yourself. You guard your head. There's so many things. So the answer is absolutely 1,000% yes. You, oh, there it is backward again. You can fight with the Kung Fu fan, just like, or Ninja fan. I've seen it uh, called both things. Ninja fan, Kung Fu fan, I call it a fighting fan. You can fight with a fan, any kind of fan, really. Kung Fu, except those cheap uh, paper ones that you get at the Chinese uh, New Year's Festival. You do that once and they're done. But you can fight with the fan, like the Kyoshi Warriors from Avatar. So yes, you can fight like Avatar, I know I keep getting that question. I've been getting that question like once a week now. Can you fight like Avatar? Is that a real thing? And my answer is, yeah, it's been, I've known about it since I was a little kid. I've been messing with these since I was a, a teenager at least. And it's one of the, uh, it's, it's cross training. Do I walk around the street? Like, you know, you can, I don't, but you have, um, yeah. Anything with a small stick, right? Uh, that, that's that Yawara, that's that uh, palm stick. Any, anything you do with a palm stick, but this is a little bit longer. This is like the Korean dongbong that the police officers used to carry. And there was a little string here and it wraps around. And some of you guys who do like uh, the Hapkido or you did Warangdo or the type old Taekwondo guys, you know what I'm talking about because maybe you've cross trained with those. But this is just cross training. Get it open, get really hot, start to cool down. Close it, go back to strikes. If you have a target, just always follow 
through. That's the key. Um, it's like a nunchuck. A lot of people with a nunchuck, they hit and it comes back and smacks their hand. The way not to smack your hand is to follow, follow through. Every single strike has to follow through. You gotta, and you have to practice in a way that you um, are fully committed on your strikes for self-defense. Always practice that way and go faster. Push yourself, get out of your comfort zone. So many people practice any martial art, right? It can be punching, it can be punching and kicking, and they keep it at kind of a, a reasonable speed, and they maybe go a little bit faster, but fighting is extremely fast. And if you want to dominate for self-defense, you just have to become much faster, more explosive. So when you practice, practice faster so that that gets your heart rate up and you get used to that feeling so that when you have to, you overwhelm the other for self-defense. You overwhelm the other person for self-defense using the weapon of your choice. And then this is the only one that does this, right? Nunchucks won't do that. My bow won't do that. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, the collie sticks. Can't cool myself down. <sighs> Catch your breath. And then get back at it. Make uh, routines. Give yourself like five or six strikes in a row. And then change it. Start with this strike. Start with that. And then come down. Go into jabs. And then put in... Yeah, Mortal Kombat, right? Absolutely. That's, you know, that's the only thing. All the old Kung Fu movies, I used to love, like Jackie Chan is a master of everything. Jackie Chan, but especially, he's got some of those old movies where he's fighting with that can and he's fan. I haven't done this for a long time, but he's throwing, let's see if I can do that. Maybe if I pay attention, right? He pops it up, catches it, and then he goes back in and then flips it around, opens it, catches it. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but there's a really, really thing. Yeah, me too, Hank. Uh, maybe we can make one. Yeah, for sure. You know, not the one where he like reaches in and pulls the spine out and all that stuff. That's probably not accurate. <laughs> I don't think it's physically accurate. But yeah, that'd be fun. Um, you know, the, the movies we grew up with, right? Or the video games. And the funny thing is, like we're probably too old that we grew, didn't really grow up with them. We were just young people when they came out. All right. Get your, th your fan, practice that one. That's just a freebie fun move, but you should be able to do it. It teaches about the principles of how the fan works. And then, you know, get after it. Again, if you want one of these fans, I have these wooden ones for sale. I sold them all out already. I have another one, uh, group coming. They'll probably be here Wednesday. Um, but if you want one, these are 20 bucks. Bamboo, uh, they have the dragon on them. And then the other ones are metal. I think I have two of those coming. Those are 50 bucks. But I honestly, unless you are just hell bent on having a metal fan for some reason, I would say stick with these. These will last you forever. The metal ones break after about six months because they're just too heavy and the glue just can't hold on to that material. And then your spines pop off and then you got tears coming down because you pay 50 bucks and then you can't use it. Maybe you chop your finger a little bit. So. Yeah, <laughs> somehow, I don't know how I can, but I'm sure I could. Um, I got a bunch of stuff in there. Yeah, uh, we'll get Connor, Connor Simon. He's uh, one of my students, he's out in Hollywood. He's a stuntman now, he's, he's learning how to do all that stuff. We'll get him, people like that, they can do it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, send me a comment, leave a comment below. Please share that with others. I really want to answer this question for everybody who keeps asking. I know it's really popular right now. Can you really use a fan? If you haven't subscribed, I appreciate when you guys do that. Um, when you uh, go to my website, pasquinelli.com, and you click on some links, some ads, that keeps the lights on. I don't know if you can see, but almost all my lights are burned out. Oh, greetings from Argentina. Love Argentina. I will see you guys in just a little bit. Thank you, Hank. I'll see you guys in, uh, I don't know, five minutes. We're talking about Kane. <laughs>